God is good. All the time. And all the time, God is good. we are so thankful that God has drawn us together this day to receive the gift of his word and also among the gift of his people. Um, for those of you that didn't watch the Wednesday lesson study, um, I'm going off script, off the lectionary. I know. How dare I? I'm off the lectionary. Well, when you hear the lectionary, you'll, you'll, you'll figure out why I went off the lectionary. Right, Jack? <laughs> uh, fair swing. But next week is more of the same. More of the same. So uh, I'm preaching it next week, just not this week, because it, it talks about, you know, brothers' relationships with their family, and my younger sister and her husband are here today, so I didn't really want to go into that text. <laughs> I'll go into it next week, <laughs> but just not this week. Uh, we are thankful that uh, both of my sisters were here, and their husbands, and my aunt. Uh, my older sister, her husband, and my aunt left to go to the Holy City. I should say back to the Holy City, St. Louis. And in case you have not heard, uh, Matthew Harrison was reelected as the Senate president, uh, and then the first vice president and the regional vice presidents will be elected at the end of July in convention. Uh, so uh, we, we are including him in our prayers today, and we, we uh, continue to do that as we pray for the leadership, especially for our convention this summer. Uh, next Sunday is July 2nd. We will celebrate... Uh, worship in, at 10 o'clock, as we normally do, with Holy Communion. And then afterwards, there is a church picnic with patriotic, uh, patriotic sing-along. If you want to join us in that, there's a sign-up sheet uh, in, in the fellowship, in the narthex, uh, to do that. Uh, so make sure you do, uh, take care of that today so that we have the right amount of... Yeah, and the picnic is here on site. In the fellowship hall, uh, and, and as as we do that, as we gather together, then on Sunday, uh, the summer prayer table is out in the narthex. Uh, as we continue to do that, in a few moments, I'll have another missional prayer. Uh, but our our group, one of the activities is happening today. We're doing a prayer walk around downtown Blairsville to pray for our community uh, and to pray for how we need to be have eyes as i said last week we need to have eyes to see what is what is happening in our community and how we are called to be doing that um if you would look at the back of your bulletin oh by the way that was one of my dad's favorite movies and you're probably going okay what's the connection well look at the sermon title And if you don't make the connection there, wait until the sermon. Uh, hopefully it all comes together at that point. Did any of you have a coat like that? The plaid jacket? We, we, were, try, we were trying to find a plaid jacket with plaid pants that were not matching. We, we could not find it. Uh, so that was the next best thing. But take a look at uh, page 8. Uh, we've done this once before. Uh, this is a Getty hymn, uh, uh, Keith Getty. Uh, we, we've, what do we have, about five or six of his hymns that we sing now, I want to say? Yeah. Uh, he, he's a current hymn writer, uh, very solid music, even better, very solid words. Uh, and so we're not going to run, we're just going to run through it one time, everybody sing, pick up on it so that when we get to it, It'll be familiar to the ear. So go ahead, Luann, and let's sing along with it. Good it is when the family of God dwells together in spirit, in faith and unity, with the bonds of peace, of acceptance and love are the fruit his presence here among us. So with one voice we'll sing to the Lord, and with one heart we'll live out his word till the whole earth sees the Redeemer has come for 
he dwells in the presence of his people. Let's bow our heads. Most gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you. Uh, as you call us to be your church, especially the congregation in this place, you have gifted us. Uh, you have gift us, gifted us with your word. You have gifted us with the sacraments. You have gifted us with your people. Uh, continue to place that word within us. Let us be able to sing songs that express our thanksgiving to you, but especially that can convey your message of peace and hope to the world around us, especially our community here uh, in this region. So guide us and lead us. Stir our hearts that we may be ever more passionate to see those people who are in need of that peace that only comes from you through our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And it is in his name that we pray. Amen. Well, as uh, we gather for worship, we take a time of uh, silent meditation. Use it to pray. Let the Spirit guide your prayer. Use one of the hymns. Uh, if you want to contemplate on the sermon text in Colossians 3, we do so as the candles are being lit and the prelude is being played. Our beautiful Savior suffered and died and rose again for us to bring us in relationship with our Heavenly Father. And then he brought us to the baptismal font where he calls us chosen ones, holy and beloved. So we begin as we remember our baptism in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I invite the congregation to please stand for the singing of the hymn.
We come before our Lord in confession, even as Jesus invites us to come to him. Come to me, all who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Jesus says, if anyone would come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. In a parable, Jesus says, come. You who are blessed by my Father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. Jesus speaks of the day when the Son of Man comes. Until that day, as we come before him in our sin and our shame and with our struggles in this world, he comes to us out of unconditional love with mercy and grace. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for you and for his sake forgives you all of your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all of your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. O oh God, because your abiding presence always goes with us, keep us aware of your daily mercies that we may live secure and content in your eternal love. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The congregation may be seated. The first testament reading is for the third Sunday after Pentecost is from Jeremiah chapter 20. O oh Lord, you have deceived me, I and I have deceived. You are stronger than I, and you have prevailed. I have become a laughing stock all the day. Everyone mocks me, for whenever I speak, I cry out, I shout, violence and destruction. 
for the word of the Lord has become for me a reproach, a derision all day long. If I say I will not mention him or speak any more in his name, there is in my heart as it were a burning fire shut up in my bones, and I am weary with holding it in, and I cannot. For I hear many whispering, terror is on every side. Denounce him. Let us denounce him. Say all my close friends watching for my fall. Perhaps he will be deceived. Then he can overcome him and take our revenge on him. But the Lord is with me as a dread warrior. Therefore, my prosecutors will stumble. They will not overcome me. They will be greatly shamed and they will not succeed. Their eternal dishonor will never be forgotten. O Lord of hosts, who tests the righteous, who sees the heart and the mind, let me see your vengeance upon them, for to you have I committed my cause. Sing to the Lord, praise the Lord, for he has delivered the life of the needy from the hand of the evildoer. The epistle is from Romans chapter 6. <clears throat> let not sin therefore reign in your mortal bodies, to make you obey their passion. Do not present your members to sin as instruments for righteousness, but present yourself to God as though who have been brought from death to life and your members to God as instruments for righteousness. For sin will no dominion over you since you are not under law, but under grace. What then? Are we to sin because we have not under law but under grace? By no means. Do you not know that if you present yourself to anyone as obedient slaves, you are slaves of the one whom you obey, either of sin, which leads to death, or of obedience, which leads to righteousness? But thanks to the God that you, but thanks be to God that you who were once slaves of sin have become obedient from the heart to the standard of teaching to which you were committed and having been set free from sin have become slaves of righteousness. I am speaking in human terms because of the natural limitations for just as you were once presented your members as slaves to impurity and to lawlessness leading to more lawlessness, so now present your members as slaves to righteousness leading to sanctification. When you were slaves of sin, you were free in regard to righteousness. But what fruit were you getting at that time from the things of which you are now ashamed? The end of those things is death. But now that you have been set free from sin and have become slaves of God, the fruit you get leads to sanctification and its ends and its end eternal life. For the wages of sin is death, but the free gift of God is eternal life in Jesus Christ Jesus our Lord. Here ends the reading. Thanks be to God. Please stand for the reading of the Holy Gospel. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 10th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. These twelve Jesus sent out, instructing them. Brother will deliver brother over to death, and the father his child. And children will rise against parents and have them put to death. And you will be hated by all for my name's sake. But the one who endures to the end will be saved. When they persecute you in one town, flee to the next. For truly I say to you, you will not have gone through all the towns of Israel before the Son of Man comes. A disciple is not above his teacher, nor a servant above his master. It is enough for the disciple to be like the teacher, and the servant like his master. If they have called the master of the house Beelzebul, how much more will they malign those of his household? So have no fear of them, for nothing is covered that will not be revealed or hidden that will not be known. What I tell you in the dark, say in the light. And what you hear whispered, 
proclaim on the mountaintop, on the housetops. And do not fear those who kill the body, but cannot kill the soul. Rather, fear him who can destroy both soul and body in hell. Are not two sparrows sold for a penny? And not one of them will fall to the ground apart from your father. But even the hairs of your head are all numbered. Fear not, therefore. You are of more value than many sparrows. So everyone who acknowledges me before men, I also will acknowledge before my Father who is in heaven. But whoever denies me before men, I also will deny before my Father who is in heaven. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. The congregation may be seated. Grace, peace, and mercy from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. I encourage you to turn to Colossians chapter 3, verses 12 to 17. As I read it before you, and you will hear some of the wording that I used in the invocation. Put on, then. As God's chosen ones, holy and beloved, compassionate hearts, kindness, humility, meekness, and patience, bearing with one another, and if one has a complaint against another, forgiving each other. As the Lord has forgiven you, so you also must forgive. And above all these, put on love which binds everything together in perfect harmony. And let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, to which indeed you were called in one body. And be thankful. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly, teaching and admonishing one another in all wisdom, singing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs with thankfulness in your hearts to God. And whatever you do in word or deed, do everything in the name of the Lord Jesus giving thanks to God the Father through him. In light of this text, how would you define Christian character? How would you define that which makes up what you see? Um, In one of my groups, we talked about the marks of uh, Monday's Bible study. We talked about the marks of the church. So uh, in this sense, what are the marks of a Christian? How would you define that Christian character that when you notice you can go, that's a Christian? I think it would somehow reflect how that person manages Christian living. Jesus gave the answer when he was 12 years old. Do you recall the story when he was in the temple and he was being asked by his mother and father... What are you doing here? Scared the bejeebers out of us. And Jesus answered, I must be about my father's business. Definition of Christian character. Managing Christian living. What I want you to think about as we reflect on Jesus and how he answered that question, and then as he grew older and how he looked, I want you to think in terms of not only of Jesus, but in our own life. Think in terms of traits and behaviors. And it's not just traits and behaviors where we can look at ourselves and go, I'm a good Christian. No, think of your traits and behaviors as you live them out in community. I know too often, myself, too often we as Christians, we like to clothe ourselves in the law. In other words, we like to be held together by rules and regulations. We like to make our lists so that we can check them off and go, what a good Christian I am. Look at my Christian character. Look at how I am living out my life as a Christ follower. 
We like to be held together by rules and res regulations. We like to be placed under a certain system. And I will tell you, uh, I didn't realize this until it was read, Jeremiah was living under rules and regulations. He was living under a system of thought that, okay, God, you, I preach this message. They should change themselves and live like me. Jeremiah in that text had to realize, though, and as sometimes we do, sometimes you dial up your personality. Sometimes you have to dial it down. And typically when we dial it up or dial it down, it's because we want to be pleasing to others. We want others to like us. Sometimes that system we live under is based on our desires. It's, it's based on our desires not to be pleasing to others, but being pleased ourselves. And, and what we do is we, our desires tend toward power, tend toward the people that we are gathered with, tend toward programs, tend toward possessions, possessions where we have so many of them gathered that it's like, okay, what do I do with these now? Sometimes we are driven by the emblems of our life. What makes you happy? What brings you comfort? But when you start looking at each of these things, the things that, that we dial up or dial down, the things that we desire, the things that we are driven by, they're under one system. It's called the law. And, and we heard in the Romans text what law does. Law kills. Law creates fear. Doubt. Uncertainty. It begins to cause you to question, am I really a Christ follower or not? Because when we look at ourselves in the clothing of the law, in the mirror, we find that we are wearing some pretty ill-fitting clothing. Either they are very loose and very baggy because we can get away with a lot of stuff, or, or sometimes they are so tight-fitting that they restrict us from doing anything and whether they are, well, maybe loose-fitting, but definitely tight-fitting clothes, restrictive clothes, are very uncomfortable. Loose-fitting clothes just look bad. Baggy pants, need I say more? And usually with the law, we start looking to settle for something else. Something that we haven't quite found yet. So we look for just one more thing to do in order to get right. And guess what? When you try that one out, doesn't work. Try another one out, doesn't work. And so where do you end up? You end up with hard stories to tell, and sad songs to sing. Paul tells us we are different. And really, if, if you've got your Bibles open still, it's, it's a lot easier if you hear it this way uh, because, again, our identity is not based on the obedience to the law, which we heard in Romans It's coming under the obedience of Jesus Christ through the waters of holy baptism. Listen to these words, uh, and, and I'm going to read it slightly different because our identity comes before we ever do anything. As God's chosen ones, holy and beloved, put on compassionate hearts. The putting on comes at the baptismal font. Because of Jesus Christ, 
He indeed is the one. He's the chosen one of God. He is the one who is holy and beloved. In fact, if we recall, even at Jesus' baptism, the voice of heaven said, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. So this whole sense of chosen ones, holy and beloved, fit the narrative of Jesus. Because it is it, those descriptors, those characteristics of chosen, holy, and beloved are enfleshed in Jesus and Jesus himself. They are so rooted in who he is and what he did to die on the cross for us. He was chosen for this. So that he may be able to put on those things for you and me. And it's identified in the phrase that Paul says here. As the Lord has forgiven you. As the Lord has forgiven me in the waters of holy baptism. Now he puts on. First of all, he has to take off that law. But he clothes us with his garment of righteousness. I know there's an armhole here somewhere. This isn't just for pastors, folks. You are clothed with the righteousness of Jesus Christ. You are bound by his command to go and make disciples. And it's all held together. No bagginess, no restrict restrictiveness. It's all t held together by the love of Jesus Christ. And so now, as we have put on, as chosen ones, holy and beloved, now put upon us is Christ himself, his characteristics, compassionate hearts. Humility, patience, ultimately forgiving. As I said a couple months ago, forgiven people forgive people. Until we realize the forgiveness that is ours through our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, until these things have been put on us through the waters of baptism, until we know that we are sinners that have been given, forgiven by Jesus Christ himself, we cannot be forgiving. But as soon as we know that we are forgiven people, we can forgive people. And in that moment, the peace of Christ rules among us. And the word of Christ dwells within us. And as it, especially in this text, it's not just individual people, it's, it's the gathered people of God. As the peace of Christ rules among us, as the word of Christ dwells within us, now the work of Christ can shape and mold and fashion our plans, our decisions, our relationships. Individually, each one of us is a representative of Jesus Christ as we go about our daily tasks, not just here in the congregation, but especially out into the community. We are representatives. Luther said, we are little Christs. But individually, as we are representatives of Christ, collectively, we are the community for Christ. If we don't gather together and go do those things to tell people about Jesus, they won't have the peace of Christ that rules among us. So Paul tells us how to do it. 
We practice it in song. Yes, every song, every hymn is a good one. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly. If you don't like the tune, if you don't like the pace, read the words. Because that is indeed where compassion and humility and patience and forgiveness begins to well up in us as we practice those songs. We get to express our thanks. This becomes everyday clothing. as we embody Jesus Christ himself, as we embody his life and his ministry to the world. No, he's not going to call you to sacrifice yourself on a cross, but as we will hear next week, as we already heard this week, he will tell you, deny yourself, take up your cross, and follow me. But as we have this opportunity to embody Jesus Christ and what he does for us through the waters of baptism and as as we receive the body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ at the fellowship of this altar, we know that the life of Jesus carries that forgiveness wherever it goes. That life of Jesus changes lives. As, they co- as we come in contact with those who need to realize that they are sinners and know that there is a Savior who, who has redeemed them. And ultimately, as we know as a church gathered together, but as we will know when we gather together in eternity, that that life of Jesus, that compassion, that humility, that patience, that forgiveness will come together in a joyous course because it will be life together. So we celebrate. We don't have a hard story to tell. We don't have a sad song to sing. Because our story and our song is about our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. as we profess our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten and not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried, and the third day he rose again according to the scriptures and ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of the Father, and and he will will come again again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, giver of life, who proceeds from
of the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray. We pray for God's will in various situations in the world, country, and community. Lord God and Father, we pray for your intervention among the nations and with the people of the world. Grant that we remember your generosity and constantly do your will. Bless us with good government, honest industry, truthful education, and an honorable way of life. Preserve and save us from violence, discord, and confusion, from pride and arrogance, and from every evil course of action. May all people strive to become united in their thinking and endeavors. May there be justice, peace, and a common purpose, especially in our land. When times are prosperous, let our hearts be thankful, and in troubled times, may we trust in you without fail. We pray for the mission of the church at large. Merciful, merciful God, we humbly implore you to cast the bright beams of your light upon your church, that we, being instructed by the doctrine of the blessed apostles, may walk in the light of your truth and finally attain to the light of everlasting life. We pray for our synod president, Matthew Harrison, upon his reelection. Grant to, all, grant to all in your church your Holy Spirit and in the wisdom that comes down from above, that your word may not be bound, but have free course and be preached to the joy and edifying of Christ's holy people, that in steadfast faith we may serve you and in confession of your name abide unto the end. We pray for the ministry of All Saints Lutheran Church, Almighty and gracious God, you have called this congregation to witness that in Christ Jesus you have reconciled us to yourself. Grant that by your Holy Spirit we may proclaim the good news of your salvation, so that all who hear it may receive the gift of salvation. We pray that you send us forth in word and deed as laborers into the harvest field of our community and region. We pray for those who will prayer walk our community after worship today. Grant that we, being instructed, reproved, corrected, and trained by your word, may be fully equipped for every good work of Christ's righteousness and with those things that are well-pleasing and profitable for the salvation of those with whom we encounter and engage. We pray for the members of all saints. O oh, holy and most merciful God, you have taught us the way of your commands. We implore you to pour out your grace into our hearts, cause it to bear fruit in us, that we may always be directed to your will and, de and daily increase in love toward you, one another, and our, member our neighbors. As you bless your servants here at All Saints with various and unique gifts of the Holy Spirit, Continue to grant us discernment, direction, and opportunity to eagerly use them always in service to you and our neighbor for your honor and glory. We pray for those who struggle, those in severe pain of hurt, helplessness, and hopelessness. Almighty and everlasting God, you desire not the death of a sinner, but that all would repent and live. Hear our prayers for those outside of your kingdom, especially Giovanni, Holden, and Rob. Take away their iniquity and turn the hearts of those who have doubted your truth and forsaken the faith of Christ. Mercifully comfort the minds and hearts of all who are broken by the pains and burdens of sin in this world. Especially today we pray for Barbara, Mel, David, Mike, Carolyn, and Wendy. 
graciously strengthen them to remain steadfast in this time of affliction and grant them patience and peace to endure their difficult struggle. And if it be your will, to restore them in your care. All these things we ask in the name of the one who intercedes on our behalf and who is our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, who also taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The congregation may be seated for the singing of the hymn. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you, be gracious unto you. The Lord lift his countenance upon you and grant you his peace. Amen. Let us go and serve the Lord. <laughs> 